Hello everyone, this is Dr. Matsudan Rao on the program I teach medical students. Today I talk about the absence now. We will consider a few anatomical features of this now. This is sixth cranial now, a paired motor now. It has got its nucleus in the upper palms, superior and medial to the facial now nucleus. It sends its axons down to the pontomodular junction with close proximity to the pyramidal tract. After exiting at the pontum medullary junction, it reaches the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus and finally exits from the superior orbital fossa to innervate the lateral rectus muscle. The nucleus of the absent now receives the afferent fibers from both the hemispheres. That means it is bilaterally innervated. It also receives from fibers from the parapontine reticular formation. In turn, it sends the fibers to cross the midline and continue in the middle longitudinal fasciculus to innervate the third nerve nucleus. To repeat, absence now is a paired motor now, that is sixth cranial now, the nucleus of which is located in the upper palms, related to the facial now nucleus, superior medially. The nucleus of the absence now is looped by the facial now medial to lateral. The axons of the absence now descend down to the Pontomedullary junction close to the proximity of the pyramidal tract. After exiting from the brain at the pontomedullary junction, it reaches the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus, ultimately exit from the superior orbital fossa to innervate the lateral rectus muscle. Now you look, look at the diagram. Diagrammatic representation of the cross section of the midbrain or the brain stem at the level of palms. It shows the nucleus of the absence now, superior medial to the nucleus of the facial now, and it is looped by the facial now, medial to lateral. You see the fibers of the absence now that run downwards close to the pyramidal tract to exit at the quantum medullary junction. This slide shows the description of the absence now. To go through the points mentioned in this slide, you see the, it is a paired sixth cranial now, purely motor, innervate extraocular muscle, that is lateral rectus, its nucleus also medial to the facial now in the upper palms. It is looped by the facial now, medial to lateral. The axons run cordially lateral to the pyramidal tract and to the pontum medullary junction. Exit the brain at pontum medullary junction runs to the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus and finally leaves through the superior orbital fossa to innervate the lateral rectus. This is the description I already mentioned. Look at this diagrammatic representation of the section of the brain stem at the level of pons. It shows the nucleus of the absence now and nucleus of the facial now, facial now looping the absence now 
from medial to lateral you see the paramedian pontine reticular formation close to the midline related inferior to the nucleus of the axis now and you see the pulmonary tract the absence now is closely related to the pulmonary tract at the inferior medial aspect of the pons well coming to the absence now nucleus just go through the text it lies in the upper pons close to the midline ventral to the fourth ventricle the most of the motor cranial nerve nuclei they are located close to the midline in the brain stem where are the nuclei of the sensory cranial nerves they lie more laterally it is loop penetration now as i told you the supra nuclear fibers they come from both the hemispheres to innervate the facial vein absent now well it also receives fibers from the cardiolateral hemisphere for horizontal conjugate gaze to the structure called parapontine reticular formation as you have seen in the picture that is parapontine reticular formation is close to the midline related to the nucleus of the absence lying inferiorly well this nucleus in turn sends fibers that cross the cross to the opposite side and join medial longitudinal fasciculus to connect the third nerve nucleus please understand this point the nucleus of the abscess now receives its supranuclear fibers from both the hemispheres number 2 it also receives the fibers from the parapontine reticular formation in turn sends the fibers to cross the midline ascend upwards in the medial longitudinal fasciculus to innervate the third nerve nucleus thus the absence now controls the vitreolateral abduction of the eyeball and the adduction of the eyeball of the opposite side so that way it is responsible for the horizontal conjugate movement of the eyeballs is it clear right so thus it acts as a center for the ipsilateral horizontal gaze then coming to the lesions lesions can occur anywhere from the upper pons to the orbit in the course of this abscess now isolated sixth nerve palsy is usually benign early diagnosis of the lesion in which abscess palsy is a part of is a part is very much very very important that means it is not isolated palsy it is associated with the paralysis of the rest of the cranial nerves then the diagnosis should be very important in order to manage lesions could be due to neoplasm injuries or due to ischemia or aneurysm etc well the lesions of the sixth nerve they are described in a 
with a term called sixth syndrome. What is this sixth syndrome? It describes the level of the lesion in the course of the sixth syndrome, taking from the nu its nucleus in the brain stem and to its termination, termination in the orbit. Sixth one is the brain stem syndrome. Sixth two is the elevated intracranial pressure syndrome. Sixth three is the bad, bad, that is Peter's Epic syndrome. Sixth four is the cavernous sinus syndrome. And sixth five is the orbit syndrome. Let us look into the various manifestations of this syndrome in order to diagnose the lesions of the abscess now. Brainstem syndrome, what it is? It is due, due to the lesions in the brainstem. Involve the sixth nerve nucleus, whether it's fibers or also involving the rest of the cranial nerves like facial nerve, trigeminal nerve, vestibular cochlear nerve, etc. The lesions are described as Raymond syndrome, Millard Gobler syndrome, Fevelis syndrome, Fovelis syndrome. Raymond syndrome is due to a small infarct affecting the inferior medial part of the pons, involving the fibers of the sixth nerve along with the pyramidal tract. Resulting in uh, the ipsilateral sixth nerve palsy with contralateral spastic hemiplegia. This is called the cross hemiplegia. Millard Gobler syndrome, the lesion is a little more extensive, involves the seventh nerve besides the sixth nerve. It results in ipsilateral sixth nerve palsy, ipsilateral seventh nerve palsy and contralateral hemiplegis. In Fovelli syndrome, the lesion is little more extensive than that of Miller Gobler syndrome, characterized by the ipsilateral sixth nerve palsy and later gaze palsy, ipsilateral fifth, seventh, and eighth nerve palsies, along with Ipsilateral Horner syndrome with contralateral spastic hemiplegia. Fovelli syndrome is associated with more extensive lesion in the pons. Then coming to the elevated intracranial pressure syndrome. This is because of the raised intracranial tension causing injury to the nerve during its vertical course in the cranium. Lesion not related to the cytopathology. Cytopathology is somewhere else causing the raised intracranial tension. And the sixth nerve is affected because of the traction on the particular nerve due to the pushing of the brain downwards due to raised intracranial tension. In 30% of the patients, it is associated with pseudo tumor cerebrae. There is papilledema and normal ventricular size with visual disturbances. Then coming to the Peter's apex bone syndrome. Here, nerve is involved in Dorlos canal under petrocranoid ligament. It occurs with other dysmedia and other inflammatory conditions. It also sometimes involves trigeminal and the vestibular cochlear nerves when it mimics cerebral pontine syndrome. Coming to the cavernous sinus syndrome, in this particular syndrome, in addition to the, to the absence now, Oculomotor and trochlear nerves are also affected. It could be due to nasopharyngeal carcinoma, 
or internal carotid artery aneurysm or meningioma etc lastly coming to the orbital syndrome the patient will have the painful eyeball with the apoptosis and the congestion so this is the brief second of the features of the sixth now with its injuries or uh, with the lesion that various levels of the now from its point of origin the pons to its termination in the arch described with the term sixth syndrome then lastly coming to the gaze paralysis what is gaze paralysis it is failure of con- conjugate movements of the eyeballs conjugate movements of the eyeball mean if one eyeball is moving to the left that is abducted to left side the opposite eyeball is adducted to move to the left this is in order to maintain the parallelity of the vision this is brought about by two centers that is cortical center and the pontine center cortical center lies in the front life phase area a this center is responsible for contralateral horizontal gaze the lesion results in patient looking to the side of the lesion pontine center it lies in the paramedian pontine reticular formation that is pp over here lesion results in movement of the eyeballs either from the side of the lesion yes there is no diplopia in gaze paralysis this part has to be remembered well these are the features of gaze paralysis and to repeat again gaze paralysis means failure of conjugate movements of the eyeballs this is controlled by the cortical center and the pontine center cortical center lies with the area a front life phase it controls the contralateral horizontal gaze the lesions of this center results in the patient looking to this side of the lesion and uh, pontine center for the conjugate movements of the eyeball lies with the parapontine reticular formation the lesion in this center is the center of the paralysis of the ipsilateral conjugate movement of the eyes there is no diplopia in the gaze paralysis Well, we have described the various lesions of the pontine syndrome like the Raymond syndrome, Povilly syndrome and Miller-Gunder syndrome and their features are associated with the degree of or the extent of the infarct in the pons. Small area of infarct in Raymond syndrome, moderately large infarct in Miller-Gunder syndrome and large in part involving the extensive area in the Fowler syndrome isolated six no palsy is a benign condition it occurs due to metabolic injury or hypertension or immunological mediated or due to viral infections Sixth nerve palsy mimics all thyroid eye, myosin eye, 
cold blood injury or spasm of the near vision pointer syndromes i already mentioned These are the diagrammatic representations of uh, the sixth cranial nerve nucleus, the course of the particular cranial nerve, the lesions in the pons, described in the pontine syndromes. Yes, this picture shows the area of infarct in Raymond syndrome. You see, at there is small infarct involved involved in the pyramidal tract and the inferior medial part of the pons, it, which also involves the fasciculi of the abscess. Now, like, look at this patient. He has the diplopia due to the paralysis of the right lateral rectus no, muscle. And he shows in the MRI a small infarct in the pons. Well, we will conclude the talk on, about the absence now. Thank you for the patient listening. We will meet again in the next class. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.